Okay, welcome. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do an automatic transmission fluid change on a 2012 Holden Cruise. Um, this is a JH Series 2. It's a turbo diesel and I believe that it is fitted with a um, 6T45 automatic transmission. Um, now I don't know whether the petrol versions have the same transmission. I believe that they're in the same family. There's a 6T30, a 6T40, and a 6T45. So I'm pretty sure that the diesel, or the amount of torque that the diesel engine generates, has the um, 6T45 transmission. But you'll be able to see in the, this video whether um, the petrol version, if you're working on a petrol version, whether it's got a fairly similar uh, transmission in it from that same family. So um, the JH Series 2, you can tell the difference between a Series 2 and a Series 1. Uh, the Series 2 has a GM diesel engine, whereas the Series 1 has a VM Motori. Yeah, I've never heard of them either. Okay, so um, main difference from the top is the GM engine has the oil filler on the left hand side the VM Motori has it on the right hand side um, so yeah you'll be able to tell uh, which one you've got um, rightio so the first thing that we need to do is I'll just show you through the bits and pieces that you're going to need to do the job pretty simple really um, I've got a couple of uh, well they're not proper ramps they're just uh, caravan uh, leveling um, ramps but they do the job uh, you'll need some wheel chocks as well some jack stands uh, you also need a jack of some description um, also a funnel make sure you get a funnel with a tube on it and you'll see the reason for that fairly shortly uh, you'll need some nitrile gloves. You don't want to get any oil on your hands. Um, having the gloves just makes it easy to clean off. And oil's probably got some nasty shit in it that you don't really want to get on you. Uh, some screwdrivers. Sockets. Uh, this one is an 11 mil. You'll also need an 8 mil. Um, handy if you've got a um, cordless drill as well. Uh, 10 mil socket. Uh, sorry, 10 mil uh, spanner, and you're also going to need some automatic transmission fluid. Now, to do a complete fill of this transmission takes about six litres. Um, I did a, a change on this car last night, um, and I took out or drained about 4.6 litres. Of transmission fluid so there's about uh, one and a half litres left in the lines and in the cooler um, so yeah so this is the second time I've done it or well, this will be the second time I've done it with this car so I'm effectively doing a poor man's flush so I've done it last night ran the car for a while come back this morning when everything's cooled down and I'm going to do it again so we'll get all of the um, or you know most of the old transmission fluid out so just have a look here that's a droplet of the transmission fluid that came out of the car and that's new fluid so we'll end up with something in between after we've done the flush um, transmission with fluid we're using it's a fully synthetic um, you don't do this often so make sure you buy the best transmission fluid that you can I use either Penrite or Neulon uh, products in my car they're as good as anything out there um, Australia made as well um, what you're looking for is something with a Dexron 6 rating so yeah it'll tell you in your owner's manual what um, type of fluid but yeah this is a GM uh, vehicle and they recommend something that meets the Dextron uh, 6 specification. Uh, rightio. So some other bits and pieces you might need. A bit of um, 
paper towel um, and that's pretty much it so we'll get into it the first thing you really need to do is remove there's a cover um, on the underside of the car so you can access the drain plug for the uh, transmission there's a whole pile of 8 mil hex screws that hold this thing in uh, I think there's about eight or nine of them um, so there's four across the top so this is the top side so you won't see this side so this goes up against the engine and bottom side on this side obviously um, so yeah so there's about seven or eight of those screws that need to come out around the cover um, there's also a whole pile of these things here that you'll see underneath as well I don't think that you actually need to take these out because I think all they do is hand, uh, hold all of these uh, pads in place on the underside of the cover I think they're just there to stop uh, vibration so just take all these screws out first and you'll also see um, there's four of these I mean, you can see that properly it's four of those with little tags in them on either side and they go um, in the sides of the cover one there I'll go around the other side so you can see that a bit better so yeah inside the wheel well one there one there just pop those out and the whole thing should drop down and come out um, Righto, so we'll just go over to the car, have a look underneath. If you've got an old bit of cardboard, just chuck that underneath. Oh yeah, you're also going to need a oil drain pan. It's got, I think, about six litre capacity, so more than enough to do what we're doing today. Alright, so underneath the car. Okay. So... get under here a bit better so there's not a lot of clearance under here so this is why you need the jack stands and uh, the wheel chocks um, don't ever get underneath a car that's just supported by a jack um, if it comes off the jack or rolls off the jack or the jack fails you're probably gonna die because there's bugger all diff um, you know, clearance under here so yeah, if it comes down and, and you're underneath it, you're gonna, um, yeah, you'll you're gonna be fucked up basically. Okay, that there is the transmission drain plug. So you got the sump over here; it's black. This is the oil, uh, the transmission oil uh, drain plug. So that's the one we're interested in. Don't do anything with that right now, um, cause. What we want to do first is make sure we can refill the transmission before we go emptying it. So yeah, you don't want to end up in a situation where you've drained all the oil out of your transmission and you've got no idea how to fill it or you can't fill it. Um, so on the top side of the engine, let's get the light sorted out here. So this here is the vent for the transmission. So if you overfill the transmission, uh, any excess fluid is going to vent out of there. So that's adjacent to your battery next to your um, engine coolant bottle. So if you follow that tube down, you should be able to see... I'll try and get a little bit more light in there. I don't know whether you can see that. I'll just grab a screwdriver so I can show you a bit better what we're looking at here. So, if you can just see that right there is where that tube goes. It goes down onto a, um, a um, screw-in lid for the transmission. 
So we need to get that off so we can get the funnel um, down onto that so we can refill it. So that's where you refill the transmission. Bottom side's where you drain it and on the side, I'll show you a bit later on, is the um, basically the, the level. So you pull a uh, bolt out the side of the transmission and when you get fluid leaking out of that, uh, you know you've got enough uh, fluid in the transmission. So, um, first things first, we need to be able to get to that to be able to refill the transmission. So to do that, we disconnect the battery because we need to pull the um, engine control unit out of there. That's it right there. Um, so you just lift off these tabs here on the side, your battery, and you get to the positive terminal of the battery. So we'll disconnect that, um, turn the vehicle on to drain any residual power. I don't know whether you need to do that, but I've worked with computers a lot and yeah, always um, earth them before you start working on them. Don't know if cars are any different, but we'll do it anyway. Um, so you'll be able to move. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll disconnect the battery and then I'll show you uh, what we need to do to get the uh, ECU out. Be back in a sec. Okay, so this just takes a 10 mil ring spanner. And you can see there's an extra wire on here that you won't probably won't have on your vehicle. That's this one here. That's for a set of uh, for a LED light bar. So we'll get that out of the way first. Okay, I'll take that off that off there. Take the positive terminal off. I'm just, you can just see there's a little, couple little clips on the side of here. Just lift those up. And you'll be able to get that out of the way. Okay. Might, might need a hammer just to loosen that terminal. Right, I'll just loosen that off a bit. Put that to the side. What I'm going to do also is just chuck a bit of rag in here so that doesn't inadvertently connect with the battery terminal again. Righto. Righto. So now the battery is isolated. We need to de uh, disconnect the uh, cables to the ECU. So you can just see these little black tabs here. Just press down on those and lift up that grey lever. And that should come all the way. I might need to do this one first. Yeah, okay, so do that one first. That should just pop up out of the way. Let's put that to one side. Then do the next one. And put that to one side. That should just lift up, but it doesn't because there's a little clip just down here. I don't know whether you can see that. Just need to get a screwdriver in there to pull that back so you can just slide the ECU out. We'll just do that now. I haven't got a spare set of hands, so what I'll do is I'll just, just see that there. So I'm just moving that there so that clips slides past. The retainer and that will lift right out so I'll just do that and be back in a sec. Okay so I've lifted that past that clip and you'll see the ECU just slides out like that just stick that on top of the engine out of the way. Now you can clearly see the transmission filler so what we need to do is just pull off the breather and you'll just see down there I don't know whether you can see that but there's a yeah just a little retaining clip there for the hose so we just get that out of the way just pop that off there so then that is right out of the way just get that to focus on there so yeah so that's your filler so you need to unscrew that so you know that you can get 
transmission fluid back into this transmission once you've drained it. I'll just do that quickly. Okay, so there's your fill hole, and yeah, that's just the filler cap there. So just put that to one side, and now we can go ahead and drain the transmission. Okay, be back in a sec. All right, here we are. Just got a socket on there. Well, you can see that too well, but yeah, as I said before, this is an 11mm socket, so we'll just get this started. And then, once we can undo it by fingertip, which is there, we'll grab our oil pan, and we'll do, undo the rest of it by hand. Probably can't see that real well because my arm's in the way, but right, so there we go. So we've got transmission fluid draining into the pan. So yeah, so you'll drain out about uh, 4.6 litres. That's why you wear the gloves. Right, so we'll let that drain. And then we'll put the uh, plug back in and uh, we'll refill it. Righto, so while that's draining, uh, we can grab a funnel. And you can see why you need a funnel with a fairly long extension on it. That just pops into the top of the transmission there like that. And you can see that. So yeah, so that's ready for us to pour new transmission fluid in once that's finished draining and we've got the uh, plug back in. When you put the plug back in, um, just put it in by hand first and tighten it all the way up uh, with your fingers and then finish it off with the um, socket. If you start it off with a socket and you cross thread it, then you're fucked. Um, you'll have a bad day. So yeah, hand tighten it and then finish it off with the socket. Okay, um, there's a bit of info on the internet on the transmission that's in these vehicles and it's really just a um, check oil level procedure but it'll give you a bit of a hand as to you know the procedure that I'm going to go through to um, check the level once everything's um, you know, filled and we're ready to do that. I'll put a link to that in the video and you'll be able to see um, where uh, all that, that bit of information that might give you a bit of a hand to, to do the job. Yeah, another thing I'll mention too, if you're going to do the same thing I've done and do a poor man's um, transmission flush, make sure you've got a container um, that you can pour the fluid that you've drained out of the transmission into so you know exactly how much has come out so you can put the exact same amount back in um, and then yeah that'll be fine for um, doing a short drive like 10 or 15 minutes to get everything warmed up and the oil uh, circulating um, and then come back park it overnight let everything cool back down again and then um, drain your transmission like I've done here uh, and then we can do a proper check of the level uh, once everything's ready to do that. Okay, you can see that slowed to a drip now. So I'll give it another couple of minutes and then we'll just put the uh, plug back in, clean off any uh, oil that's leaked out over the transmission and then we can start to refill. Be back in a second. Okay, so we've drained the transmission and I've pumped the uh, transmission fluids out of the pan into this oil pump here and you can see we've got about five litres that's come out this time not 4.6 that I got last night so we're going to put five litres back into it um, then we're going to uh, run through the procedure to um, well yeah, I don't know whether it's 
priming the transmission or whatever or getting the oil flowing through the transmission properly um, and you'll see that in the document that I've linked in this video on um, how you do that so basically you start the car put on the brake um, vehicles in park and then you move the transmission through uh, reverse leave it in reverse for three seconds uh, into neutral leave it in neutral for three seconds into drive leave it in drive for three seconds and then back up through um, into park uh, switch it off um, and then um, yeah we'll uh, go into what do you do next after that okay so we're ready to refill the transmission so we've got our funnel in uh, the filler hole um, and we're just going to pour five litres of transmission fluid back into this transmission okay be back in a sec Okay, so we've got five litres of transmission fluid back in there. Just put the cap back on. You can see that. So it's back on and it's tight. Reattach the vent tube. You can see that there and just pop it back in its retaining clip like so okay so then we can just slide the ECU back in to place Connect the connectors in reverse order. Just push that all the way on there until it clips, and then do the other one. Okay, so that's clipped in place. I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the battery and then we can start the car and start circulating that transmission fluid. Rightio. So everything's filled. Uh, we've checked for leaks and made sure that the um, plug for the um, transmission drain is tight. So we're back in the car now. We're going to start it up. So we've got our foot on the brake. We're just going to move the transmission Reverse, three seconds, neutral, three seconds, and then drive, and back up, and then back into park. Okay, you're going to have to reset your clock after having the battery disconnected. So then we can go ahead and uh, bring the transmission up to temperature. And in the procedure that you'll see uh, I've linked, uh, they talk about getting the uh, temperature in the transmission up to about 85 degrees. Um, there's no um, display um, that tells you what the transmission temperature is, but there is one that tells you what the water temperature is. So that's pretty much normal, it's about 85. Um, degrees so we'll go for a short 15 minute drive uh, get everything up to temperature and then we'll come back and we'll check the level of the transmission okay so um, I'll be back okay we're back from getting everything up to temperature um, so what I've done now is I've taken the front passenger side tire off uh, so we need to take that off so we can get to the uh, oil fill level on the transmission. Um, I've also put a spirit level across the front of the car. This is the car needs to be level when you uh, check the transmission uh, fluid level. Okay, so if we come down here and you'll see just there on the back of the transmission that is the 
the fill level check. I don't know whether you can see that real clear, but yeah, that's it there. So we need to take that bolt out. Um, and in theory, if we've got enough uh, transmission fluid in there, there should be a, a steady stream of fluid come out of that and it'll slow pretty quickly to a drip. Once it slows to a drip, we can put that um, bolt back in and we're done. Uh, if there's no oil coming out of it, that means we need to add more transmission oil. Um, so we'll take that out and we'll see how we go. Be back in a sec. Alright, I've loosened that um, check fill uh, bolt off so it's finger tight now. Um, the car is idling. You need to have it idling when checking the uh, transmission fluid level. So I'll just go ahead and take that bolt out and hopefully we'll get some oil flowing out of that. And then we don't need to put any more in. And there's a fair bit coming out, so that's good. Remember I'll put a, probably an extra litre in more than what I thought, or more than what came out uh, the first time I did this. So it's fine. The oil pan underneath. So when that slows to a drip, and you put this bolt back in and you're done. about another 400 mil go into it the second time I filled it uh, than the first time so that's probably what's coming out of that. So we'll look at that in here. It's still dribbling out fairly well. So we don't have to we've got drips yet. Yep, we've got drips now so put that back in. And we're done. Righto, so I'll clean that mess up. Uh, shut the car off. Uh, do a final check of everything. Um, and then put the um, sump guard back on. And that's pretty much it. Um, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, doing it yourself, you're going to save yourself some money by taking it to a shop doing it. Um, you're also going to know that the transmission fluids uh, that gone, it's gone into your vehicle is right for your vehicle and it's decent quality uh, and you get the satisfaction of doing it all yourself. But yeah, that's pretty much it. If I um, have any additional notes that you need to um, take heed of, I'll just put those in the comment section. But that's it. Thank you.